hello again and welcome back to Witch Fix. Today I'm going to be looking at a film which was released in 2006 and it's called Five Girls. Or if you read the title in which they've attempted to replace letters with numbers but not fully understood the concept of how that works, it is called Civ Girls because a five is not an F guys, come on. This is 93 minutes long and is a certificate 15 and oh forgive me father for I have sinned but it is Catholic school again for us I'm afraid. I'm going to give trigger warnings at the top for mention of eating disorders, mention of self-harm and drug use. Although those things are passing and kind of explained in the plot of the film but be warned. So this is actually a film from my personal collection, meaning that I didn't buy it in specially to review. I've actually owned this and watched it voluntarily a number of times. It's kind of slightly worse than The Craft, but it's still watchable and it's faintly amusing. So I give it a thumbs up, but I thought I'd delve in a little bit deeper and sort of talk to you about what I get out of it and what I like and what I think could have been done better. So the film opens on St. Mark's Catholic Girls School, where improbably Ron Perlman is a priest called Father Drake, and he is looking at a girl called Elizabeth who is doing some religious artwork as if she's been held back from her RE class. Then Elizabeth is attacked by a demon called Legion and he kind of tries to possess her. She's doing the Lord's Prayer, the door slams and when Ron Perlman manages to bust it open Elizabeth is gone. We then have a sort of weird rock music with Ron Perlman voiceover and then the credits are gone and it just says five years later. Five years later and St Mark's is closed and has now been reopened as a sort of reformatory for girls instead of a school. And five girls, given the title, have arrived to be sort of taken in by this school because their parents are at their wits end. The first girl to be dropped off is Alex. We're not really sure what's happened but her dad seems very pissed off about whatever it was. Alex is quickly revealed to be telekinetic. She's also the main character in that she doesn't really have a personality like the other ones. She's just kind of there and does various protagonist things to move the story along. We are then introduced eventually to the other four girls. Leah, who walks through stuff and is kind of a princess. Connie, who is a practicing Wiccan. He's a little bit stupid, but who can see spirits and is vulnerable to attacks by ghosts. Mara, who is a faith healer, a lesbian and kind of a hard case because she has a brass knuckles knife with assassin carved into it. And Cecilia, who is a blind seer who reads the tarot cards and she is a goth slash anarchist. So these four people are introduced and they meet up with Alex, who are then introduced to Father Drake, who is come out of retirement or maybe just alcoholism to come back to the school and try and make up for whatever it was that happened to Elizabeth and headmistress Pierce who is kind of basically what you'd expect from a dominatrix headmistress in a really bad porno film in that she keeps whacking things with a ruler and she talks like this all the time it's very very stern but she is kind of young and blonde and kind of hot. There's a lot of pentagram symbolism the desks that they have are kind of arranged around a sort of pentagon so that they form a, a pentagram as they spread out. Their beds are arranged in the same way, the blood vials and the pee cups that they have for their mandatory drug test. So those things are all arranged in pentagrams and it's all very symbolic I'm sure. Now there is a distinction in the film between witches and Wiccans because Connie is the only one who's a practicing Wiccan and the others are just kind of witches and they kind of talk to each other about this. Connie identifies herself as a Wiccan, Mara kind of is very scornful and implies that they all have a background in witchcraft and she says that she got her book of black magic off eBay which snap that's where I buy everything Mara we're twinsies. So the girls are in the school but there's a general feeling that all is not right here and that things are gonna go wrong which we're not really sure but it's not long before they start seeing the ghost of Elizabeth wandering around. Or is it a ghost? Woo! Anyway, so they go through various Bible teachings. There's a mandatory strip search. They get to know each other. They're sort of stuck in this school. They do a few Bible lessons and it's all hunky-dory. And then some slithery, crawly blood that looks kind of like a bit of Nutella that's gone astray crawls up Connie's leg in the middle of the night and attacks her. 
This is where the self-harm thing comes in because they initially attribute the marks and scratches showing up on Connie to a self-harming tendency. When actually it's because she's so open to the spirit world that sometimes she can get attacked by dark energy. After this, the girls find out that they're not meant to go up to the third floor. And because they are five delinquents locked in a reform school, they instantly go to the third floor and find a giant pentagram drawn on the floor with their blood samples and urine all over it. This begins the beginning of a ritual which is meant to trade their imperfect dark souls for the one clean good soul of Elizabeth who was unable to be possessed by a demon because she was just so wonderful. The demon in the story is of course Legion who was introduced at the beginning and that's from the Bible story about a demon that identified itself as Legion and was cast into 2,000 pigs by Jesus and it went off a cliff and died fairly certain that they wouldn't be able to do that in a Catholic reform school so they're gonna have to come up with something else. The acting itself is pretty good as is the casting it's generally quite a good watch because all the girls have their own kind of personality and the interplay between them is kind of humorous in that kind of snide sarcastic Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of way. Aside from the mandatory semi salacious strip search, everyone gets to keep their underwear on, it's fine. And the bit where one of them gets spanked with a ruler for, you guessed it, going to the third floor, which was the Boaton. There isn't really a lot of kind of gratuitous sexual stuff in this film. There's a particularly, I'm not going to say nice moment, but it's a, a noteworthy moment when one of the girls being possessed kind of comes on to Ron Perlman. And she's got her shirt tied up the way that someone would if they were in Dukes of Hazard, And then she kind of undoes it and it hangs down. The bit down the middle of her chest is exposed, but nothing else. And she's obviously trying to seduce him. And Ron Perlman gives her the old, get thee behind thee, Satan. Do your shirt up, you silly girl. Which I think is quite nice because it doesn't allow it to go to like a weird skeezy place. It's just kind of like the demon trying to test him and he comes through it pretty much okay. The acting as I said is pretty good aside from poor headmistress Pierce who was apparently given the brief of porn librarian but nothing else and when she's trying to appear mournful and upset at one point she just cannot stop smiling. It's very weird and she delivers most of her lines like a Disney villain namely the wicked stepmother from Snow White. The CGI like the acting is pretty good there are some bad bits in places like the aforementioned evil Nutella blood, but the great big horrible demon bits, uh, they look pretty good and a very juicy skeleton they make too. I enjoy the general magic. They do some rituals, so that's nice. There's also the kind of gesture magic of charmed fame, especially with like the telekinetic character Alex. And it is, for the most part, a kind of good watch, solidly entertaining. The only thing that I would say lets it down is the ending because that's where you're reminded that this is a horror film and not a film about girls who are witches because and I don't want to give anything away here but most of the people in the film do die so that's pretty dark and unpleasant uh, but aside from the ending if you can forgive its sudden descent into oh is it dead or is it coming back then you can kind of get around it and enjoy the other 80% of the film for what it is, which is a kind of fun romp with some witches and some demons and the odd bit of blood and ritual. I think I originally bought this DVD because it does have five different pentacles on the cover and side, so it pretty clearly marks itself out as being a film about witches or witchcraft. I did look up a few reviews online when I was sort of planning how to do this episode and the funniest one that I saw was just there are six girls in this film which is technically accurate because Elizabeth is there although for most of the film she is on a different plane of existence or in hell or something so I don't think you can count her as a main character but yes there are six girls if you want to get really technical about it but all in all I would call this a definite good follow-up to the craft in the sense that you could watch the craft and then if you wanted the feeling of watching the craft again for the first time you could watch this and you wouldn't be too disappointed. Unlike with some of the other offerings that I've looked at this is probably my favourite of them all so far and that's definitely why it's in a permanent position on my shelf. You could probably still buy this DVD second hand. I'm not sure about buying it new because it seems like something that may have had kind of a limited release. 
It was released by Momentum Pictures though, which I have at least heard of, so that's pretty good. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and that if you find anything lingering in a box somewhere or up on a shelf that you read ages ago but think I might be interested in, please do get in touch. You can do so via Twitter, which is at Witchfix, and you can do so on Gmail, which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. I can't wait to hear from you and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.